Hello, this is Keith Cooks. I'm Keith and it's Christmas. So I'm going to do something you can do with leftovers from your magnificent Christmas dinner. I'm going to make a Christmas dinner pasty. Oh yes! A few shout outs before we start. One for Cheryl Adkins who made a donation via PayPal. Thank you. Much appreciated. And also to a new Patreon fan, Karen Daly. And I know Karen has been following Keith Cooks for quite a while, so that's very welcome. Thank you. And also, a Christmas card. This is a first. A beautiful Christmas card from Rich and Linda in New Jersey. Uh, so I don't know how he got my address, but um, I've got yours now. So there you go. Happy Christmas. So if you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, press the bell, ring a ding ding, get notifications. And without further ado, let's make a pasty. So I said this is a recipe for using leftovers. We haven't got any yet because it hasn't been Christmas yet. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, I know I did Christmas dinner a couple of weeks ago, but there's nothing left of that. Anyway, I got this. This is one turkey leg, right? Unbelievable. £4.50 from Morrison's, uh, as opposed to a turkey crown, which costs £20. Or, yeah, or a whole turkey that costs an awful lot more. So uh, this will be fine, but I do need to cook it and I'm going to pressure cook it. I'm, I'm going to freeze that half and I'm just going to cook the thigh with some veggies so we get a bit of a stock going as well. I'll also need to pre-cook some pigs in blankets. That's British pigs in blankets which are little sausages wrapped in bacon, not American pigs in blankets which are hot dogs in pastry and sound utterly baffling. Also I'll need the gravy and I'll need to make up the stuffing but not cook it because it'll get cooked inside the pasty. To cook the turkey and make the stock, I've got my pressure cooker pan. I put the turkey thigh in there, and then um, one and a half onions, just top and tail, and sort of cut in half or thirds. Keep the skin on for colour. And then uh, a carrot, top and tail, cut into big chunks. And the outer leaves of a cauliflower. Normally I would use celery, but amazingly, I haven't got any, and I couldn't find any when I went shopping. A small handful of flat leaf parsley, about 10 whole black peppercorns, and I've got some winter savoury. I was uh, when I did a uh, Canadian dish tortier the other day. Canadians use a lot of savoury, but we never see it here in the UK. So I, mean, I ordered it from the interwebs, and it just arrived this morning. So a teaspoon of that, and a good whack of sea salt. Top it up with boiling water, and then bring it up to pressure and turn it down, let it simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes. Pigs in blankets, a chipolata sausage. Uh, chipolata just means it's narrow diameter. And streaky bacon and roly roly. There you go, that is a pig in a blanket. Easy, eh? You will need some pastry. I'm going to use hot water pastry because that is the easiest pastry in the world to bake. And it's also perfectly suited for Cornish pasties. It's good, strong, crispy, tasty. And did I say it was the easiest thing in the world? It is. So 300 grams of plain all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of salt, 125 grams of lard, 120 ml of hot water. The lard is chopped into bits. I'll pop it in the hot water and I'll put that on the stove and heat it until the lard is melted. Mix the salt in with the flour. Okay, that's all melted into the water, and now I'll just mix it in with the flour. I always do this in two stages, so we get the first bit in, first half. Get that mixed in and then add the second half. I don't know why, I just think it makes it easier. That's about as mixed as I can get with the wooden spoon, so tip it out onto your worktop. Just work those last bits of flour in with your hands. Alrighty, uh, I think I forgot to mention I'm going to make four pasties, so hopefully that'll be enough pastry. So wrap it in plastic film and let it cool down to room temperature. I'm going to make up the stuffing and I am cheating. I'm not cheating, I'm using a packet, like actually half a packet of sage and onion, so that's 85 grams of stuffing mix. And if you've been following my last few videos, I've been 
trying quite hard to get some sage, fresh sage. It's been uh, unobtainium, really. But I managed to find some the other day, so I'm going to stick it in there. Even though I don't need to, really. I'll just make it more sagey than sage. It'll just sage it up a bit. <laughs> And then we want 200ml of boiling water, which is uh, four fifths of a cup, in fact. I hate cup measures, you know that, don't you? It's mixy mixy. And you can add a knob of butter if you want some extra richness. Just stir that in, set it aside, let it cool down. The turkey and the veggies have had their half hour cooking and the depressurised and cooled down a bit and now I'm going to take the meat out and set that aside and then strain off the liquid into another saucepan and we'll bring that to a rapid boil and we want that to reduce in volume by about half. Now I'm going to prep the veg. I have got a potato, <laughs> a couple of carrots, a parsnip and some sprouts. Four, well it's four sprouts, one each. So about 150 grams each of those veggies. It has come to my attention that some Americans don't know what parsnip is, so this is a parsnip. I think it's still called a parsnip if you can get it in America, but in Spanish it's called a chili villa. I don't know if that helps. So top and tail peel and dice. There's a little vegetable dice. If you have some leftover veggies, really I wouldn't recommend using them in this, in this pasty because you, you do want that shape, that shape and size really which is, you know, like what you would do in a traditional Cornish pasty. And you want them not cooked so that they will cook inside the steamy pastry case of the pasty. Now the sprouts just remove the grubby outer leaves. To make the gravy, I've got a medium-sized frying pan and a big lump of butter melting in there. And when that's melted, we'll sift in a more or less equal amount of flour. In fact, because I want a really thick gravy, I'm going to use more than an equal amount. And because we're using the dark meat of the turkey, I want a sort of dark, meaty, nutty gravy. So we can let the, let the roux, that's the flour and butter mixture, we can let that cook a bit longer than normal so it turns brown. And then add some stock. Whoosh! <laughs> and just let that simmer for a bit and wait for it to thicken up. So I made a delicious gravy and then my intention was to get nice neat slices of turkey. <laughs> oh boy was I wrong. Anyway, it's definitely cooked and I think I've invented a new thing. This is pulled turkey and we'll just pop that in with the gravy, get it coated all over uh, and then let it cool down and then we can start assembling the pasties. Oh yes. But first I need to slightly pre-cook the pigs in blankets. We need to turn the oven on to 160 celsius for a fan oven, convection oven. That's 180 for a conventional one and that is gas mark 4. In for about 10 minutes. Now if you're not familiar with the idea of a pasty, it's a disc of pastry with filling on one half and it's folded over into like a D shape and crimped around the edge. So you don't need uh, any kind of tin to form it, but you do need like a template to get the size of your disc right. I'm making a big pasty. So this is 23 centimeters, nine inch diameter, which is about halfway between a dinner plate and a side plate, if that helps. <laughs> So I've divided the dough into four equal chunks, balls, to you. And we need some flour on the worktop and we roll them out. Okay, that's just about enough I think. It's pretty tight, I could have done with a bit more pastry, but anyway. We'll do it. Right, we're going to start assembling a pasty. So we want a thin layer of stuffing. I would give it a, a good dollop of turkey in the gravy. Oh yeah. 
a pig in a blanket and some of the raw veggies. If I'd uh, known how long it was going to take for this to come together, I'd have put those in cold water with maybe some lemon juice to stop them browning, but I didn't. I'll try and get the same amount of these veggies in here. These are looking really good. So, so I've got my rooty veggies in there. I'm going to put my sprouty leaves and quartered sprouts. Too much of everything really, but uh, that's easily solved when I make some more pastry and some more pasties. All right, a good, uh, good sploosh of ground black pepper. And now we'll finish them off. Just wet the inside of the rim with water. Pull it over. Oh, it's a tricky bit, too much filling. Ah. I always do this with pasties, too much filling. So fold it in half, press it down and then crimp it and ah, it's a bit it's a bit of an art this and I'm, I'm you know after many years of attempting to do this I'm still not an expert, nowhere near. So you just uh, put your finger there, gra grab the next bit between your finger and thumb, push it over. You do see pasties with massive crimps that like an inch wide and that, that is deliberate. That's well, it's it's a throwback from the origins of the Cornish pasty when when it was uh, tin miners, it was their lunch. You know, they're covered in toxic stuff. And so the, the crimp was a handle. You didn't eat it, but it meant that you wouldn't get your, whatever poison was on your fingers wouldn't get into your dinner. Just about ready to pop these in the oven. But before we do that, a bit of glaze, a bit of egg wash which is one egg mixed with a sploosh of milk. And that goes in the oven for 40 to 50 minutes because we need to be sure the veggies are cooked. And we'll probably turn it around halfway through to get the coloring even. And now it's taste test time with Mrs. Keith Cooks. Hello, Dolly. Hello, Peckle. Mwah. You're looking very moosey. There we go. Okay, food, right. Uh, food, food, hungry, food. Okay, Christmas food, dinner, food, pasty. Food. Uh -huh. I recommend the knife and fork. Yeah, I think you're right. One for pastry. A little bit too thin to Ooh. hold together. At the moment, actually. Uh, where have they gone? What? Yeah. I'm living on these. We made another <laughs> batch. They are so good. But, tell you that pastry is perfection. Mince pies. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've done them loads so I'm not doing them again mm -hmm. for a video. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? Oh. <laughs> this is very good but I just finished the um, um, oh what's it called tortillere this morning. Ah. So that was the Canadian pie you made last week. That's been brilliant you know. I don't think I've actually had it hot at all. It's really good cold. So I've invented mm. pulled turkey. Good idea. Mm. Yeah, you don't really want big well, chunks in this, do you? I know. Well, it wasn't exactly what I planned. <coughs> <laughs> it's what we've got. Oh, yeah. Well, I must admit, I'm down one end here with what might be stuffing and some potato and some carrot. Mm -hmm. So, sort of seasonal pasty. <laughs> Mm. Oh, I found the sausage! Oh, there's the pulled turkey! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you really want me to talk all the way through eating this? Oh, look, there's this! Mm -hmm. There's that! Tell you what, this, this little bit is really nice. So, I did give it an extra 10 minutes, so it's had 50 minutes all together. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, mm -mm -mm. That's really nice. I love that pastry. Mm. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Have a great Christmas mm -hmm. and all that. And uh, maybe see you next week. Maybe not. Don't know. I want Christmas off. I'm sorry, folks. No holiday. Okay. You can do it. Oh, come on. Thanks for watching. See you next time.